Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here. Today I'm going to be walking you through a short Big Team Slayer game that I got while playing on the map Dispelled in Halo 5's Big Team Battle playlist. This video is going to revolve completely around me in the Scorpion tank and how I like to set up with my teammates on the right side of the map on Dispelled next to the enemy portal exit and try to stay alive with the tank on that side of the map. This video is going to be completely revolved around showing why this setup is crucial to winning Slayer and CTF games on this map. And I'm going to be showing mainly my two teammates who are assigned Rifle 1 and 2, that's Polo and JC, and they are going to be trying to control the enemy portal exit. Now, off the start of this game, I just want to mention a few things. So this is theater mode, there's going to be a lot of bugs. You're going to see my reticle is going to change randomly to a BR, even though I'm in the tank, that's a bug in theater mode. There's several other bugs that I can't help, so just please keep that in mind that there's just nothing I can do about that. Also, please realize that this is under a 5 minute game, and I get a 16 kill, 0 death perfection, while showing off exactly how good the tank is in this position right here. Also, please realize the enemy team is not that great. This film I just chose simply to show you guys how destructive this setup of the tank can be. It was short and sweet, and I'm hoping I can keep the video and commentary short and sweet as well. So to start things off, I need to briefly go over the enemy team's spawn locations. Now, in Slayer, it is absolutely possible for the enemy team to backspawn on you in your own base, but it's not that often on Dispel. In CTF, that never happens. But in Slayer, it sometimes can happen. So let me go over the main spawns for the blue team here and why I'm trying to push up right here with the tank on the right and my two teammates are trying to control this side right over here. The enemy team can spawn in, I'd say, three or four main locations. Right here on the enemy portal exit, either on the portal or right here below on these rocks. They can also spawn over here on the side of the enemy base. They can spawn a little bit on top of or inside the enemy base, okay? And they can spawn in this kind of open tree field. A lot of people will spawn right here, over here. So those are the main kind of spawns we need to watch. And you need to understand that the enemy team has a portal in the bottom of their base that takes them to this portal exit. It's a one-way portal over here. So what you're going to see during this gameplay is I'm gonna push up on the right hand side here in the scorpion tank and my teammates rifle one and two are going to immediately push off to my right and I'm gonna show these guys uh, kind of with my camera here you can see that rifle one and two all, all the way through the trees there have already aggressively pushed up on that right hand side to try to meet any enemy players coming out of their teleporter exit so going back to my POV I do need to mention something off the start here. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on it, but it is absolutely critical that the person who grabs the plasma pistol that spawns on top of your base follow your tank and optimally keep, keep behind your tank by staying right here and just using your tank as cover. Once the enemy tank, uh, once we spot the enemy tank, that guy can peek out and plaza pistol enemy tank, freezing him so that I can get three shots on the enemy tank and tank, take him down. That actually is not the way this film ends up happening. Uh, you should keep in mind, though, that it does take three tank shots to kill an enemy tank. Now, I would like to mention also that if the enemy team had brought their tank out along this side, what would, ha would have happened is they would have pu started pulling the tank out right here and the front of the tank would have been exposed right here on this sight line, and I would have been able to get a shot on it before the actual gun came around and was able to actually get a shot off on me. What does this mean? This means that I'm able to get the first shot off on the enemy tank if it comes this direction. Every single time the enemy team comes this direction with the tank, I'm able to get the first shot off on it, because its front body comes through first, not its gun, so I'm able to hit the tank first with my shot. What that means is I'm going to win that tank battle 9 times out of 10. But if my teammate's able to stun the enemy tank, that's even better, because I'm not at risk of dying, and I can proceed to get more of my tank shots into the enemy tank uh, and win that battle. Now right here, you can see that the enemy tank pulled uh, their... 
uh, bottom mid across the way there. But my teammates are going to go ahead and take care of that because uh, that guy is going to be trapped bottom middle and they're going to freeze that. So I, I hear that that's coming from behind me, but I see this Warthog in front of me here and I get a double kill. I'm turning around thinking that uh, the tank is going to push me, but it doesn't. The reason it does not is because I heard my teammates call out that they were already taking care of it bottom middle. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I see the enemy wasp come up, and I get a really sick shot off on it. That's pretty rare. But if you do hit the wasp in midair, it's normally an instant kill. I get the triple kill on the ghost top of their base. Uh, and you're going to see me get multiple hit markers like that. I don't really know how I'm able to get two hit markers like that back to back and not kill the enemy player. I have no idea. But let me briefly go over the setup and why this is so crucial. You see these two enemy player or these two teammates behind me. These are my teammates. What is their purpose here? Well, remember when at the beginning of the game when I said that this was one of the main enemy spawns that they can actually spawn in this location. What my teammates are doing here is that they are effectively blocking the enemy team from spawning behind me so that I don't have to worry in the tank and I can shoot the entire enemy base without being fear of being spawned behind. They're also watching the teleporter exit and responding to my callout. So you can see here when I'm in the, in the tank, one of my main jobs is to look at the enemy teleporter exit you see at the bottom of their base right there and call out immediately and very loudly that I see an enemy player teleporting. I call that out to my teammates, rifle one and two, and they respond by looking at the teleporter exit and taking that player out. Um, preferably, we would have picked up the incineration cannon, which spawns right here, but since this is the beginning of the game, they've kind of aggressively pushed up to the uh, portal exit. So that's the idea, is that we're not only blocking the spawn, allowing me to shoot people in the tank, but we're also preventing them from going through the teleporter. And this is really, really an important strategy to hold. And you might be thinking, okay, well, that's a useless position because this guy's not going to get any kills at all. This guy actually can pr provide a decent amount of damage in the enemy team because you have a scoped DMR that spawns right here, and it's it very quickly respawns. So you'd be surprised at how much damage the enemy uh, or your teammates can get from this position. So switching back to me in the tank, I'm going to give you guys some pretty good angles. Uh, that angle that I just used in the bottom left-hand doorway is very important to watch. You can see I turn around here just to make sure that both of my teammates are there. But that bottom left doorway is oftentimes a spawn for the enemy players. You can see there's a guy right there and I pick him off. He just spawned in that doorway after I looked away. Um, there's another player over there, but I can see this guy pushes out. So I get a hit marker on him and pull him out to my teammates. Um, just now, you saw a very weird kind of glitch, and you can see the smoke trail. You see how the smoke trail kind of extends past the player here? This is oftentimes a bug with many of the tank rounds. Uh, the, a tank round can actually go through an enemy player, kill them, and continue on through that player and blow up behind them. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how this happens. This reminds me of how the railgun in Halo 4 used to have blank shots that wouldn't kill enemy players. Thankfully in Halo 5, the tank rounds do still kill enemy players when they go through them. But I wonder if that's associated with the uh, hit markers. I'll get on players, but I still won't kill them with a tank shot. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. But you can see that I you know, occasionally will turn around, check this spawn. Uh, my teammate, as I called out earlier, is going for the incineration cannon right here. That's a good play on his part. He's going to bring it back so he can watch the teleporter exit with it. That's a great play. Um, I see this guy's head peek up over here. I shoot the tree, get a double kill. Uh, very uh, good play on my part. I turn around, make sure I'm not getting flanked from anywhere. And you can see that I'm constantly not only just kind of watching my sides, but I'm constantly firing, okay? I get another double kill on two players trying to peek up here. The number one thing that I want to tell you guys about the tank and what I see good tank drivers do on this map is you never, ever stop firing, okay? There are almost no scenarios where you are in a tank right here where you ever want to stop firing unless your teammates are in the way or unless you're turning to get the perfect shot. You want to be constantly bombarding the enemy base with your tank rounds. 
and this may be a very obvious tip, but I need to say this very clearly, you have infinite ammo. You have an instant kill, infinite ammo, very fast trajectory rocket launcher. Use it. You need to constantly bomb be bombarding these doorways, be bombarding the top of their base, shooting these bottom doorways, even though you don't see players there. That's what a good tank driver will do. You're just trying to see if you'll get hit markers or see where they are, or just make the enemy players think that they can't push out. You know, fire warning shots. Just constantly keep the enemy team feeling like they're trapped in their base or that you know they're there. Now right there, I'm calling out to my teammates that I, they could be portaling right now. I see multiple people in the bottom of their base, so I'm really trying to keep track of these kills. I don't know if that guy portaled, but you can, you can hear behind me. Uh, my teammates are engaging this player and they kill him behind me here. I'm switching back to my POV. Uh, you can see that um, my teammates behind me are working on this hog. This guy gets out, but my teammate with the incineration cannon takes him out. And you can see how Rifle 1 pushed up at the incineration cannon. As soon as he noticed that a guy was trying to get near me or hijack me, he aggressively pushed up to try to get angles on him. Okay, it's important that you don't necessarily be behind this rock so that your teammates can get angles on a guy if they're hijacking you. Very important to do that. And it's just a good play by my rifle teammate in general. Now right here, the reason I'm not firing is because I have teammates in front of me. Like I said earlier, I communicate with my teammates, hey look, you're in front of me, and he backs up. Now I wanted to mention something about this player lifting over. You can actually hit this boulder where this guy is lifting over. The reason I didn't pull up and try to do that is because I saw my teammate right there. I saw him, so I'm not going to pull up and try to get that shot, but I could absolutely hit the top of that rock with my tank, and it's a great other little angle to shoot at when the enemy team is lifting out. On Dispelled, you never really want to lift out the front of your base unless it's the start of the game for some emergency reason. So you can see we're just sitting here hounding enemy base. Now I wanna I wanna say something, okay? Where do you think this enemy player came from? Okay, let me let me show you uh, very clearly. Okay, let me switch back to my POV and I want to show you something. Where are my teammates? Okay, I have the uh, highlight mode pulled up. Where are my teammates? Where's rifle one? Where's rifle two? Well, rifle one's over here, okay, and rifle two is across the map. Both of my teammates are not on the portal exit. Now, it doesn't have to be both, okay? Yes, you may want a, a second rifle player to float around the map, and those your rifle teammates, or the, whoever is guarding the portal exit, I'm just using rifle because it's convenient, they should be communicating between themselves on who stays at the portal and who doesn't. I would strongly recommend that your incineration cannon player stay at the portal exit. And this can be applied to the other side of the map as well, by the way. If, you're, if you spawn blue side and you're pushing up, you hold the tank here, and you look at the enemy base, and your teammates hold the caster, uh, the plasma caster, on the enemy portal exit. It's also just as good at holding off people coming through the portal, just like the incineration cannon. So I just wanted to briefly mention that. But again, back to my point, where are my teammates? Why are my teammates not over here blocking the spawn? Well, actually, this provides a fantastic negative example for this video. Because I promise you, if you go back and watch the theater mode, which I'm not gonna rewind because it will bug the film and it glitch it out, so I'm not gonna be able to show you guys the rest of the video. So I'm just gonna sh tell you guys, this enemy player spawned right here. And you can bet your life that he's going to go straight for me and try to hijack me. Now, thankfully, I'm a rather advanced tank driver, or at least I'm decent. And so the instant he tries to hijack me from the back, which is a huge mistake, I'm going to shoot him right off of my tank. Bye, you're gone. Okay? You're not going to hijack my tank because that's not, you're, you're an average player, basically. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean, I, he's probably actually okay. But... You can see how if the enemy team tries to hijack you from the back, you can easily use this rock or any close service to shoot them off. And notice how my tank was on fire. My tank is still just on fire. I barely did any damage to myself by doing that. Thankfully, the splash damage on tank rounds and wraith rounds has been fixed in a update that happened many, many months ago, so where it doesn't do as much damage to yourself and does a lot of damage to enemy players trying to hijack you. This is an advanced maneuver that people in the t Wraith and Tank will be able to pull off, and it's really nice. If they hijack your front, 
you can also still shoot them off, but it's a little bit harder, and you have to be very, very close to like this rock wall, for example, to do so. But again, my main point is that your teammates need to be behind you on this area, blocking the respawn and blocking players going through the portal. The instant that they are not there, they need to communicate that if they've died. And because I saw a player who ran up behind me and tried to hijack me, I'm going to be very, very aware and realize that there may be players behind me. I call out to my teammates, hey, Rifle 1, you left your position. He, he runs straight back there. And sure enough, two more players have spawned in this location. Okay? Notice how these two players have spawned over here in this area because my teammate is not holding the top of this rock. It's so crucial, and I, you know, I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but it's so critical that your teammates be over there because when you're standing at the top of that rock, the likelihood that the enemy players are going to spawn over here is really slim. And even if they do, you can see them on your radar and you can be checking this and you can incineration cannon them in the face or just kill them because they're not going to know where you are. At least they're not going to know where you are on foot as a rifle player on top of that rock, should I say. So right here, again, I'm working with my teammates. I'm communicating that I found enemy players behind me spawning there. And my teammates just call out to me that, hey, uh, tank player, uh, your, your uh, back spawn is clear. We actually call it your back spawn. And what I'm about to do right here is I'm going to shoot the enemy wasp, which respawns at the top of their base. This is yet another reason why it's so insanely critical to keep your tank up throughout the entirety of the game, if possible. Because... The instant the enemy wasp respawns, you can shoot it down. If one of your tank shots hits that wasp, it is very difficult for the enemy team to do anything with it. And if two tank shots hit it, it is dead instantaneously. Meaning that you can very quickly take out the enemy vehicles. You can also take out the enemy team team's tank when it respawns. It's a three minute respawn for the tank in the bottom of the base. Um, as long as you move the hog, you have to move the hog to get the tank to respawn. Don't ask me why. Just remember that uh, when the tank goes down, it's three minutes till it's respawn. And you must move the hog to get it to respawn, at least in this current version of Dispelled. So you can see where I can just take out the enemy vehicles without even blinking. Before they can even get in them. That's why it's so important on this map to hold this side, to block this respawn for the enemy team, to block the teleporter exit, and to take out their vehicles and communicate with my teammates behind me. That's another glitch, sorry about that. And just keep my tank alive on this side. You can see once again, my targeting reticle changed. That's not my weapon, I have to, it's just a glitch in theater mode. Notice how I was able to get that tank shot on this guy who's sitting up here. And you'll see me a little later, I'm going to shoot a tank shot right here, and I'm going to get hit markers on this guy. And I'm communicating with my team where they are. Don't hesitate to take these shots. I know I said it earlier in the film, you can see me get hit markers there. Do not hesitate to hit these players. Um, this guy tries to push up behind me, and I'm going to take him out pretty easily. Actually, my, my sniper teammate takes him out. That's a great job uh, on him to do that. So I hope this film was overall helpful for you as far as understanding why it's so important to push up and hold the tank on this side of the map and your teammates to keep it alive. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is also that the incineration cannon and the caster, they respawn very, very quickly. So you can have like a total of three incineration cannons on the map at the same time. Both, both of your rifle teammates can have incineration cannons at the same time. So it's, it's nice if you have two teammates guarding this area because one of them can go grab the incineration cannon while the other continues to guard the portal. Then when the next incineration can cannon comes up, the other teammate switches out, goes for the incineration cannon, and then goes back. Or, if you want, that teammate can float out and try to get other kills. It just really depends on how you want to play it. That's why it's crucial that the tank and whoever's guarding the portal exit behind your tank be communicating flawlessly throughout the game. Everyone else, really, like a Sniper and Wasp and a lot of other players, they are uh, meant to float around that area. Guys, I know that the film doesn't show the perfection, but at the top of the screen here you can see that all the enemy team players quit out. We beat them 54 to 4, 
and it was uh, 16 kills, zero death, perfection. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate um, any feedback you guys have. Leave a like. It helps other people find the video when they're looking for things like this. Hopefully that explains why this setup is so important to hold. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next capture, or whatever I end up recording. Peace.